Hi guys, hi guys, hi, hello, hello. If this is your first time of, you know, coming across this video or my channel or um, Rouge channel, hi, welcome to the very third episode of Lenses. Um, so you may, you may be asking what is Lenses, okay? So through this um, video, we're trying to help people that want to move abroad. Um, and by that, creators come on, they share their life, um, based on you know where they are at to kind of like help you gain much more insight to decide if that is the country for you or not obviously this just a single video is not going to be enough that is why you get the opportunity to reach out to this creator check out content on their channel and then decide uh, and then be able to kind of like make an informed decision so on today's episode i have uh, the amazing <laughs> amazing route on my channel she's joining us from the uk she's going to go on ahead and introduce herself and i hope this um today's session is going to help someone in um like you know one way or the other so let's keep it rolling please kindly introduce yourself hi everyone i'm so happy to be here my name is dola Kwadu. um i film about faith beauty and lifestyle so if you are streaming from my own channel <laughs> you're welcome happy to see you once again um, i'm happy to be on Anne's channel as well um i was really excited when um Anne reached out to me for us to you know film this video and i i definitely believe that it's going to really help you know you when you watch it so stay tuned to the end as well so just a brief introduction about me like i said my name is dola kwadu um i'm currently living in the uk um i came to the uk to study a master's and you will definitely know more about that as we go on in this video basically i'm also a christian content creator as well and yeah i'm excited to be here <laughs> thank you so much for you know that introduction then i guess i'm also going to introduce myself because if you're watching from you know roots channel so that you be able to kind of like know a bit more about me so my name is Anne, and then i am joining from italy so as we go on ahead you're going to know much more about me as well so let's keep the conversation rolling um yep. i know you've mentioned that you came to the uk for your masters but then can you tell us about the university you studied at and then like you know the year you actually moved to the uk okay so i moved to the uk um last year that was um september 2022 and um i came and then i i studied a master's because I'm, I'm done now so i uh, say so i studied a master's in public health and international development in the university of sheffield so um i was opportune to get a fully funded scholarship which i'll probably get into later but yeah, that's it. So I've been in the UK for about a year plus now. And I would say, yeah, it's been a ride. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So how about you, Anne? Yeah, I am in um, Italy. I came in four years ago. Like, it's actually been a while. So I, I work here. And basically, you know, as we go on, like, along in the conversation, you're going to know more about me as well. But I, I do... Um, create content about coming to study in Italy and then I, I do assist um, students as well so you definitely should check my channel out if you're watching from Boots channel. Next we are going to talk about like how easy was it coming to study in the UK, how easy was the application, uh, we're going to talk more about the scholarships later on as well and how easy was the application just basically okay so that applying to the university right yeah okay so um basically applying for a course to study i don't know how it is for undergraduate students but because i studied a master so i'll be able to talk more about you know if you're coming for a postgraduate study or a master so what i would say mm -hmm. is that basically the first thing that you should definitely do is check out the website of the university you want to go into one thing i really noticed about the website is that they always have enough information that you need 
for what you like in case you want to apply for example it, they will show you the list of all the courses available they'll show you then their eligibility criteria you need to apply the documents that you need to apply and then even even if you're like confused about okay what is the course about what am i going to be doing during my master's they kind of give you like a breakdown of like the modules or like the topics that you probably be treating or that you'll be studying during your master's so that's one thing i really do um comment um the uk the websites for is that they always have enough information so you just have to you know take your time read through every information if probably you already know the course you want to study that's perfect that's fine you can just go straight into it but if you're someone that you're still confused about should i study this course or should i study that course then you just take your time to read through both courses so you can have an idea of basically what you're going to be doing so that was for me it was easy because i had already gone through in detail what the website was saying about the course so i had an idea for example the course now that i was that i was studying basically um, involved going for a field trip so that alone kind of enticed me. So I already had that information that, okay, this is what this course is about. So that's why I didn't just do a public health. So I did a master's in public health and international development. Aside from the fact that, okay, that course was actually eligible for the scholarship. Let's say, for example, I wasn't applying for a scholarship, but because I had gone through in detail what this course was about, I had seen that, oh, there was a field trip involved. And I was like, oh, wow, this would be a good opportunity or experience so it's easy if you take your time to read through what you need to do and get your documents in place documents you will need probably um a cv references um a cover letter or a personal statement and of course your degree certificates your transcript those kind of things those are the kind of documents that you would need to probably prepare for but definitely check the websites of the school you want to study in oh okay 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 in the UK, I don't know, here in Italy, um, there's one particular site that kind of like helps students um, mm -hmm. called University Italy. I don't know, in the UK, do you guys have one particular website where students can kind of like find information about all the universities and coming to study mm -hmm. in that country and everything? Well, I know for I I know that there's a website called the UCAS, but that's for like undergraduate students, so they can okay. check the UCAS. So it's UCAS UCAS website. It's like the Google of schools and courses. Basically, you can get more information. Mm -hmm. But for postgraduate studies, there are lots of websites actually available. Okay. Like if you just do a normal Google search and search for the course you want to study in, master's, for example, masters in public health, you see loads of websites that will list out all the schools that are offering that course as well. So I don't know a specific one for postgraduate, but I know for undergraduates that want to maybe travel to the UK to do the undergraduate study, they can check the UCAS website. Okay, 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 okay. So those of you um, with Italy, like those of you who want to consider Italy as well, with Italy is just like um, you have University Italy, and you can find every information about coming to study in Italy, mm -hmm. the wow. universities, yeah, um, whether the course is in English or it's going to be in Italian, like everything, every information is there, which is actually really helpful mm -hmm. um, for international students. So whether you're coming for undergrad, um, postgrad, PhD, like every information is actually really there. And it's so helpful because coming to study here, the process is a bit, I think that's why. Maybe in the UK, mm -hmm. it's a bit easier. But in here, the process is so crazy and i think it's really helpful like that side makes it a bit easier as well and let us touch a bit on um you know the visa application process at your end because i know like it's it's a thing so many people want to move and go and study in the uk in canada in the us and all that kind of stuff <laughs> so i'm i'm sure it might be very very difficult getting like you know the visa how was the process like? We just touch on a bit wow. so that if they want mm -hmm. to know more, they go check out um, that information. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that, that the best place to actually get more information about that would be the UK government website. So www.gov.uk can get all the information about applying for a student visa. But I'll just give my own experience about applying. So when I was applying for the visa, I had to, first of all, get, um. there's a kind of um, letter you need to get from your school. It's called the CAS. So basically, that's like the school saying that they are the ones sponsoring that visa to basically 
permit you to come and study in the UK. So I had to wait for a while. Some universities do take a while. So that's why when you're planning to come, let's say you're planning to come in September, it's better to start your application on time. Although some courses have their deadlines for application already. But I would say that most times that you know, cast letter is always, it usually takes a while sometimes. So I had to wait for that for I think two or three weeks for that to come true. And then even when it came true, it didn't show that I was given a scholarship. So I had to send it back to them for them to work on it again had to wait again for them to send it through so that was the whole time so i was really anxious at that moment because i was looking at the time i had left to resume and everything so after getting that letter then the main thing is just to apply on the website so or your basically your application for the student visa is on the uk government website so you do the application there some people use agents to apply if you if you feel like okay you need an agent to guide you then please by all means do that some people do the application by themselves it's usually quite explanatory like if you just like go through the application form but if you're confused about anything it's always better to ask someone or maybe use an agent basically so once you apply on the website you send in your application then you have to fix a date to come for your bio like your biometrics or something like that basically where you get like a capturing and then you submit your documents you scan your documents if that's what you want to do some people scan their documents from home and then they just go and get capturing and that's it so once you do that already also in nigeria getting a date for that biometrics so or getting a date for that capturing can be a whole hassle like uh -huh. literally i was doing midnight video just to get a date like so that if someone maybe cancel the date i can quickly get that date so it's actually that also takes a while actually during rush period like before september a lot of mm -hmm. students are also traveling so you, it might take a while to get a date but once you get it that's fine and sorry i forgot to mention you have to do your tb test as well so i i had to like do a tb test because that is also compulsory the tb test you can do it and get your result in a day depending on the center you are going to so once you have those documents, you have all your documents, your proof of funds for those who are not on scholarships. And like I said, I'm not like I'm not an immigration agent, so I don't have all the information. But based on what I know, though, this, this is how the application went. And then within three weeks, it depends. I had to pay for a priority visa because my school was resuming you know late september and if i did if i didn't do that i'll probably be getting to school like in october so i just had to pay for a priority visa because of the timing but usually it takes three weeks to come out so yeah that's basically the application is not so stressful but it's all those little little things that you have to do that makes it you know more like burdensome and all but aside from that the application is quite straightforward if you already know what you are doing and you have it like all your documents and all okay, yeah okay. how is it like okay. for italy well here yeah, it really really can be stressful and it also depends on the embassy because usually um there are differences in the requirements you know depending on whichever embassy you are coming um from or whichever country you are coming from but then basically like in ghana in nigeria um you know at the end of the day just like the documents you mentioned you have to submit every document in relation to your study and then it, the school have to prove that they are the one you're coming to study there so they are sponsoring you and then for that you need um to there's something here in Italy. after you get admission you have to pre-enroll to that university and they will kind of like they are going to validate it and send that information to the embassy so when you apply um, for the visa, uh, they, because of the that information that the embassy have received, they know it's a school that is kind of like that is sponsoring you. So it kind of like pickings the process. And at the end of the day, you still have to show proof. Like here, I don't know if proof of funds is a thing in the UK too, but then you have to show that you know um, you can be able to take care of yourself yeah. while studying. And then most of the time, that is what stops a lot of people from, from actually being able to come in because if they see that you don't have um any means to come and mm. study um sometimes you might even have the money but then they're going to check um the source of that money and then to find out whether it's something that can keep coming you know to mm. kind of like support you out there and then wow. if it's not possible you, you are not just going to get um the the visa so sometimes it can really it's a struggle like sincerely but some people to get it like you know within 24 Easily. hours so mm. i really depends yeah 
I think it depends at the end of the day, each and every one in their faith. So just follow the requirements by your specific embassy and then just hope for the best, basically. Mm, all right. <laughs> um, yeah. So the next thing I want us to talk about, you know, anyone that is moving to study abroad, um, either in the UK, in Italy, anyone that also wants to move to kind of like live in these countries, not necessarily just study, but into kind of like work as well. There's something everyone wants to know. What do you, what are some of the things that these people need to know before moving in? What skills do they need to come in with? Because even as an international student, you should be able, you should have some skill sets that differentiate you from the others. Because most people are coming after study, they want to be able to live in, in like in that country. And sincerely, school is not going to give you all the needed skills like within that time frame mm -hmm. so what, what are some of the things these people need to look out for in coming to study or moving to this country and what skills do they need to come on board mm -hmm. with you know okay um that's actually a very good question because to be honest a lot of people most times when they come to study they want to get you know a job afterwards so i would say it, it actually does depend on at what stage you are coming in so for example someone that's coming in immediately from university let's say they just graduated from undergraduate degree and they're coming in for a master's immediately they won't probably have like work experience so they might not necessarily have as much skills but what i would say is that during your own like let's say for example you are watching this video and you're still like let's say you are you are still like in school you still have a year or two before you graduate and you're planning to come maybe to do your master's in the uk i'll say at this point that you're in now try and do some volunteering where you are because one thing i realized is that by volunteering you're also gaining some skills so skills like for example um maybe time management skills maybe having like a team spirit because most um uk employers that kind of skills they are looking for good communication skills as well like in terms of like oral communication and written communication those are the kind of like soft skills that they are looking for and let's say for example you are someone that is into like tech and all of that of course you want like all those like technical skills as well so that if you are able to start looking for a job you can add that that okay you have experience in this so for someone that is probably working before they come to do their masters for example i would say where you are working at now there are some skills that are peculiar to your job and i believe that you should have so like i said for for in the tech world they have technical skills like people that are software developers they have skills in like html javascript and all of that so those are skills that you can now put into use so even after your master and you're looking for a job you can get that also it's very important i think communication skills is good for everyone like in terms of written communication like how can you pass message across and are you like someone that can work in a team as well so how can you show that you're working in a team so based on your work experience as well have you worked in a team while you were in nigeria or whichever country you're coming from these are things that you can put to use one thing though about working in the uk is that even if you have 10 years of experience in another country compared to someone that had maybe two years experience in the uk they are more likely to pick the person with two years experience in the uk now it, it doesn't apply to everybody but that's kind of what i've been seeing so far like when people have shared their experience with me because you could see people with five years six years experience in nigeria and they are coming for a job that probably requires that kind of experience but because they don't have their experience in the uk they might not really be considered so that's why when you're coming come with the mindset Set that you're coming probably to start at an entry level job so even if you have six years experience in nigeria you might most likely start with an entry level job here in the uk and then you can now start working your way up although it doesn't apply for everybody some people they are blessed favored lucky and they can get a high level job even after their masters but i'm just saying like majority of people they usually can. start with an entry level job but of course if you're coming as a medical doctor as well it's even the same thing as a medical doctor you probably start from like the you know the lower level before becoming you know doing your residency or becoming a consultant and all of that so that's what i would say so basically just kind of building those skills and work your way up when you start working in the uk as well from the scratch also you start building those skills and building those experiences as well yeah 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 thank you so much for sharing that it's actually true i feel like when you're moving anywhere you consider moving to 
anywhere in Europe, anywhere, um, you know, to the US, or um, I feel like it's very, very necessary for you to be open-minded. But like for my end, what I would say, if you're considering moving to Italy, like be open-minded because the way of life in your home country, where you're coming from, you're most definitely going to experience something different out here. So like be more open-minded and be willing, just like, um, you know, Ruth said, be willing to start from the bottom. Because sometimes, yeah, it will happen. Sometimes you have to um, start from somewhere you are not really like expecting, but then build up the necessary skills because most employers, it's actually true, most employers will pick people that have a little bit of experience in their country than someone with more experience coming from another country. And then with skills that I recommend is like pick up tech skills. Now it's really a thing. Like you, you're going to get a job, a well-paid job if you, you know, you have tech skills. So that is one thing you definitely need to look um at. You know, digital marketing is also a thing now. So learn how to kind of like social media and you know just be able to understand um how things work in the digital marketing space. That is yeah. also a thing out here in EP. So yeah. um yeah, that is definitely something you should um check it out like you can take courses in coursera i know you can take all the courses they are definitely good they're going to help you but try and, and pick up like you know gigs even if it's free to be able to um, practicalize these um skills that you picked from the courses and then you'll be able to get a very good job um yeah. with with it yeah so that is what i'll say regarding the skills and what to expect when you you're looking to like Japan. It's not enough for you to just jump <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's not enough. It's not enough, enough. for you to just jump like that. You should have like you know, plan. Have a plan. What skills mm. do I enter into this country with to put me above mm. other people? Because as as you want to jump that, people want to jump too. So mm -hmm. how do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, yeah, that's very very important. Competition is gonna be high. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. yes, definitely. Now let us talk about you know scholarships. You at the beginning you did mention the fact that you came in and you studied on scholarship. So let us look at like you know the number of scholarships in the UK for students. Um, yeah, let's quickly talk about that. Okay, so um, I do have like a whole video yes. that talks about how to apply for scholarships. So I do recommend check that out on my channel. Um, it's actually my most watched video on my channel, actually. So you you definitely see it there. So I really talked a lot about how to apply for scholarships, but I'll also like share a few tips as well. So yeah, I did come on a fully funded scholarship. And I would say like um, when it comes to looking for scholarships, like I also shared in, in the video on my channel that it just basically starts with a lot of research. So you have to do loads of research as well and also um there are a few websites that you can check as well one of the websites i would say is um opportunitydesk.org so basically it doesn't just show uk scholarships but scholarships you know anywhere else as well depending on where you want to go to so you just basically have to do your your whole research so there are different types of scholarship we have the government scholarship and we have the university scholarship so the university scholarships are those scholarships funded by the university themselves now when it comes to university scholarships there are few universities that are able to offer fully funded scholarships and it's mostly and mm -hmm. uh, majorly those big you know universities like top 10 top 20 that are able to afford you know to fund students on a fully funded scholarship but what they do what they do is that for other universities that are not able to they give you like a part scholarship so maybe the, for example they'll say that they'll cover maybe 20 percent of your tuition fees or 30 percent or 50 percent just like a part-time scholarship so some some what they do is that they will tell you that they will fund only your tuition fees but then they're not going to fund your maintenance allowance. That is like basically your living expenses as well. So it just depends. And that's why you have to do your research and kind of source out those universities offering the one you want, basically. For government scholarships, on the other hand, they are the ones that are the popular ones, like Commonwealth, Chief Name, the Erasmus Mundus, all those ones are like government scholarships that they are able to fund, you know, 
30 students, 50 students on a fully funded. That is your fees taken care of, your living expenses taken care of, even sometimes flight tickets as well, accommodation allowance. They have that kind of capacity, so they are able to do that. So if you are looking for a government scholarship, those ones are more competitive because more people are applying for that. So that's when you have to basically do your due diligence as well, your research as well, check the eligibility criteria because for some scholarships, if you don't meet the eligibility criteria there's no point applying for them basically because over here there there are no there are no sentiments if you don't meet the joke there are thousands of people applying so if you don't meet the eligibility criteria they move on to the next person basically so you have to check it that you meet the criteria and you have to most times those ones they will always ask you to write like a scholarship essay or to maybe answer some questions in, a, in an essay format basically so you also have to make sure that you sell yourself using that you know opportunity on the scholarship essay as well they might have their own criteria they used to pick i'm not involved in that so i don't know what they used to pick but i do know that you know just make sure that you fit the eligibility criteria you write a very good essay as well and you know just hope for the best so but if you want more details and more information then do check out the video on my channel and yeah yeah, yeah. guys i also suggest that like if you're considering the UK and you are looking to get a scholarship, you definitely should check that video out. And I'm sure even um, she also has a video on experience about the visa and all of that. Her channel is the best place for you to actually check out because we cannot just talk about all of that like in a single video. Uh, but then out here um, in Italy, like there's this possibility where you can even study for almost free, okay? Because there are so many um, scholarship opportunities. Um, and then I'm going to tell you later when we talk about like, you know, student jobs, I'm going to tell you the reason why you can get to study for almost free. Um, but then there are a lot of scholarships for students out here. We have university and departmental scholarships. Then we also have the governmental scholarship. And this one's, these are merit-based scholarships. And they're going to, you know, you have to be able to meet the criteria for you to be able to be selected. But then we also have another um, form of scholarship, which is just based on your family, um, like your family income. So that is, those are the regional scholarships. And then we have it in every region in Italy. But this, they're not going to consider like whatever CGPA you graduated with. They are going to look at your family's economic condition. Oh, wow. So the poorer you are, the more money they are going to give to you. But then this is, um, this, you cannot just tell them I'm from a poor um, family. You need to be able to provide documents that shows that. So they have their specific requirements. And mm -hmm. then with this scholarship, it's going to cover your feeding. It's going to cover like your tuition. You're going to um, get almost like, it depends on how much you declare. So mm -hmm. yeah, it covers your tuition, your feeding, your accommodation. And then they also give you money and then your meals as well. So um, these are the options. I have videos on, uh, about this on the channel. So definitely do check it out for my channel as well so that you get to know more about um, yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, with the governmental scholarship, the popular one in Italy has to do with the MICE scholarship and then the Invest Your Talents in Italy scholarship. So you guys can also definitely check it out um, about that on my channel as well. So we are going to move on to student jobs. <laughs> That's one that everyone is always like interested in. <laughs> Yes, like how easy it is getting a student job in the UK. Huh. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, a well-paid say... <laughs> oh, well student job. Hmm. That one is tricky. To be honest, I, will, I won't say it's difficult and I won't say it's easy. I'll just say okay. it's in the middle. And mm -hmm. it depends on a lot of things. It depends on what kind of job you're looking for. Like in the UK, yeah. the care jobs are more popular. So yeah. when it comes to if you if you are willing to work a care job, um, I think within a month, within a month on average, I think on average students do get a care job within a month. And or like I said, it depends on different factors as well. Um, and what kind of job you are looking for. For someone that is on a scholarship and your maintenance and living expenses is being catered for, you probably not be looking for a very demanding part-time job. So for me, for example, I worked as a student ambassador 
in school and that's basically kind of being there like to help other students that are coming in and to kind of you know show them around the university tell them what university life is about just basically that kind of you know welcoming them let them know what the university is about so the, of course those kind of jobs are not jobs that you'll be able to raise your school fees from or be able to pay your rent from because those are jobs that they of course how many hours you work in a week is not probably it might not even be up to like 13 hours in a week that you're working so that i say it all depends on you know the person so for someone that is probably coming to raise money for their fees and probably needs money to pay their rent and or will probably look for a job that they can work up to 20 hours per week with because in the uk Thank God I remember to mention that in the UK, you have a limit of 20 hours per week to work. As at now, I don't know if it's going to change, but I know that while studying, that was the limit that we had as, you know, as a student. So 20 hours per week, to be honest, it is not enough to raise up, you know, <laughs> school fees and all of that. But there are people that do it and they are able to do it. So what I would say is that definitely to start preparing yourself just prepare your mind that some people think that once they come and land in the uk that same week they'll get the job it, it's it doesn't it doesn't always happen that way to be honest there are so many other things involved because now even as a student as well if you're looking for a good paid job i think the minimum wage is about maybe um 11 pounds or 10 pounds i can't really remember the minimum wage now but if people people work in supermarkets people work in factories people work in like maybe beauty supply stores people do care jobs like i said so it just all depends on people working like mcdonald's or other restaurants so as a student it just depends on your capacity and some people have responsibilities and like some people come with their family as well so yeah. that also influences what kind of jobs they can get and that they are willing to work so like i said it's not easy it's not difficult but just have it at the back of your mind that it may not come as immediate as you want to but eventually you should be able to get a part-time job yeah job. yeah 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 and uh, this is what i'm going to tell you the reason why i made mention of it when i was telling you guys about the scholarships here yeah, it's actually pretty difficult getting wow. a job. that is why wow. they are covering everything for you with the scholarship so that mm -hmm. like the the mind is for you to be able to come and actually really study because mm. the the like the expectation is really high with the studies and it's wow. really intensive yeah but then you can get like you know jobs we here it's also 20 hours for students so you can mm, get jobs okay. like yeah yeah you can get um jobs like babysitting to cheat english and all of that yeah but then if you you can also if you are looking to really make money while studying, easily is not a place for you. Like people will not tell you the truth, but me, I will tell you the truth, like right wow. to your face. If you are looking to make money while studying and be able to take care of your entire family at home, please, it's mm -hmm. not a place for you. Because <laughs> even, even the minimum salary is like on the floor, like you know, it's on the floor. And then as a student, you get people that will not even want to pay you like well enough so because of that if you are looking to get money then no it is not a place for you but if you really want to study and your expenses and everything need to be catered for then it is the place for you but then the student jobs are just the normal things i've mentioned and that is why i think um that is the more reason why i spoke about having tech skills because with this one, you can get even a remote job anywhere in the world while studying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and it's really going to help you. With that, you can make money out of it because you're using, like, you know, your skills and all of that. So that is why I was like, you guys really need to pick that skills before, if you are really considering moving to EP before kind of, like, coming in because it's really going to help you to get a very, very good job. And I've experienced that myself. That is why I'm, I'm highly advising that. And outside of that, look to um you know um certification programs that help is kind of like teach english because so many people like it's booming that one you're going to get paid for it like mm, to teach english yeah so do the celta and all the other courses that will kind of like help you to be able to teach english speaking english is not enough you should you should have certificate that show that you can teach it to be able to earn good money yeah so uh, that is that about the student jobs you can check um like you know <laughs> 
<laughs> you can check um, specific videos on our channels to kind of like know more about that as well. But then we are going to move on to something which I believe is very, very like important general life in the UK and it's the okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the life like in the UK? And care to share with us? And outside of that, like with racism as well, because someone moving anywhere in the world will want to know how the situation like like are people treated fairly? Um, if you kind of like qualify for a job, would they want to give it to you? Um, you know, not mm -hmm. considering your skin color and all of that. So mm -hmm. let's let's touch on um, that. Well, I'll say life in the UK, I think it's best of all having that understanding that the system here is different from back home. Um, the culture is different. So you definitely have some culture shocks as well when you come. But I would say in terms of like basic amenities that is provided basically there's 24 hour you know power supply the roads are good the hospital system or the healthcare system is not the best but they are definitely doing well i must say to be honest although other other people have like different opinions about that but i would say like at least they are they are doing something like if if you need a doctor for example when i was in when i was in uni we had like a uni GP, like a uni general practitioner. So whenever we just needed, like there's an app that you can basically book an appointment. You can even choose the doctor you want to see. It was basically easy, although they have their times. Like I said, they are not perfect. They are not the best, but I believe that they are they are trying to be honest mm -hmm. or to be fair. So I would say that is it. And also when it comes to like, also in the UK, everyone is minding their business. Everyone is going on their own. So it can get really lonely as well. Um, especially if you're coming in alone, you're not coming with any family. If you're coming in as a student, you might get really lonely. So I would say as much as possible, try to, you know, join a community. Um, if you're a Christian, join a Bible believing church, interact with people, make friends as well, because um that will help you in terms of that the loneliness part. And also um when it comes to like being discriminated by skin color, I haven't experienced that. And some other people may have may have you know experienced that but ever i'll say since i've been to in the uk i've not experienced racism or any discrimination because of my skin color and i know that over here in the uk organizations can be fined or they can be actually sued if they if any or if the government or any you know the people that are in charge of this uh find out that you know they are they are refusing someone a job because of their skin color that is actually not accepted in the UK. Like even when you apply for the job, they will let you know that they will not discriminate you based on your skin color or your gender, or if you have a disability, because they would they would even provide support for you if you have a disability. So that's one thing I've noticed here in the UK while applying for jobs as well, that they won't discriminate you based on your skin color. Maybe some organizations do that I'm not aware of, but. I'm, I'm not saying that, oh, they are all perfect and there's no one doing it, but to my own knowledge and understanding, because someone else may have experienced that, that I'm not aware of, but based on my own personal experience, because disclaimer, I'm speaking from my personal experience. So based on my own personal experience, I haven't faced any discrimination because of my skin color in terms of like jobs and all of that. If you are, if you have the right experience they are looking for in the job. And for example, now when it comes to we now as international students or international or foreigners, we do need sometimes like, for example, you, you would probably need a visa sponsorship. What is going on now is that most organizations are not offering that sponsorship. So that's where like there's kind of like battle and then people are like oh they are applying for jobs that are not giving the visa sponsorship that kind of thing so that's where there's like the headache there but aside from that um yeah i think it's it's fine to be honest yeah, yeah. how is it like in italy well just like you mentioned like life here is definitely different from uh, like you know our home country so you are definitely going to experience like shock because you're like okay i'm not used to this like yeah but in here people really do mind their business and so if you're not if you're the type where you 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 just want to be in other people's business or you're not comfortable doing things on your own and all of that you're really going to struggle out here and then it's mm -hmm. true it really do, it does get lonely so 
I highly suggest you really keep in contact with your friends and your people back at home. Mm -hmm. So you you know you keep touch with them, and you know as much as you try and keep in contact with them, try and also find community here. But please mm -hmm. don't just like you know I just want to find community. So even if you you are trying to um, how do I say it? Don't put yourself in spaces that you feel like the people are not really the community you want to be around. To okay, be yes. Yeah, so if you're a Christian, don't just try moving with people you don't spiritually feel aligned to just because you want to, you know, overcome the loneliness and all of yeah. that. And yeah, as of well that, with racism, it basically depends on where you live in, okay? Whichever city you're going to live at, is, it depends. And then no two people have had the same experience in Italy and then anywhere else in the world. So mm -hmm. someone else will not experience discrimination, another person would. So just keep an open mind. And then what I will say is whenever you experience anyone like acting really towards you because of your skin color, please stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to we have to learn to start standing up for ourselves because you are no different. Like you're human and then people need to treat you with respect. So mm -hmm. if you apply to a job and they don't pick you, try another opening try another place like mm. people are actually going to you're going to get a company that will pick you for the skills that you have and mm -hmm. then yeah so just keep trying and i don't want that to kind of like stop you from moving to a country because wherever you go to in the world let me tell you you are going to experience racism and there are people that you're going to experience that you feel they're acting weird towards you because of your color but some people they are just rude like that they are yeah. rude to everyone, their own skin color, everybody. They are just rude like that. So they are just, that's how they are. So mm -hmm. when you when you, you have that at the back of your mind, it helps you to help you to be able to move anywhere mm -hmm. and keep an open mind. And then when people try to treat you poorly, you stand up for yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is what I'm going to um, say about that. Yeah, you're going to get jobs. Some people are not going to pick you. Just keep applying, apply somewhere else. Okay. Now that we've touched a little bit on, you know, what to expect and then racism and all of that, I want us to just touch on, you know, the dating life in the UK and then in, um, like in Italy because, <laughs> ha, <laughs> it's, part, it's, it's, it's part of life, it's part of life and then people true, coming true. in, you actually need to know. <laughs> yeah, true. People need to know what they should expect obviously we are not dating um you know we are not coaches we're gonna tell you everything we've not experienced everything out here but then at least um a little bit that we can touch on so what's dating like in the uk is it like nigeria is it like Ghana? <laughs> i'm really thinking of how to answer this question because i'm not currently looking for Oh. you know that dating experience in the uk mm -hmm. but i would mm -hmm. say based on like maybe people that have kind of um talked about it what i can say for a sure fact is that most people say that it's difficult to date um in the uk or i think not just uk like abroad in general and that's because like i said earlier one everyone is minding their business wow. one thing i know that some guys have complained about is that you know in nigeria a guy can easily walk up to a lady on the road and say um you know hi how are you yeah. that kind of thing can i get your number here in the uk they can easily say that you're harassing them and before you know it you're sent to jail so i feel like guys are kind of you know maybe careful in that aspect so maybe when they're like in an event or in a gathering then they can i think ever since i've been in the uk it's only once a guy has actually stopped me and be like oh hi can i have your number and i was like wow like this is the first time so i feel like maybe guys are usually careful about that and when it comes to like the dating life honestly i can't speak much of it because i'm not in that game at the moment That's but true. i would say that you know, people do say that it is quite difficult to, you know, date and all of that. And I guess it's because of that whole everyone minding their business, mm -hmm. people being careful, so that they're they not being told that they're harassing someone and all of that. Most Nigerian ladies probably say that, oh, that most of the guys here are probably either married or already in a relationship. Like that, that, that's what I hear most times from them. So I'm like, oh, that's, that's, that's difficult, you know. And to be honest, I just believe 
I'm a Christian, so I believe that, you know, God God um, has great plans for you. So God will definitely divinely connect you to someone. There are people that have met their husband here in the UK and they're happily married. So like I said, um, it just depends basically, but it doesn't mean that there is no way at all you can date someone or marry someone here in the UK. People are having happy married lives and um, it's with people that they met here in the uk so just pray for god to connect you to your own you know divine spouse and yeah i think that's it how is it i'm very i'm really interested to know how is it like in italy please <laughs> well i don't know if it's like a thing but then i feel like it's actually really like a thing out here in europe where so many people do not you know uh, african setting we believe in marriage you know how sacred it is and all of that but then you know out here so many people actually do not believe in marriage let me be very very honest with you people don't believe in marriage people don't believe in waiting until marriage so if you are the type that you're coming out here and then you have that expectation i believe in marriage i i really want something serious so many people are doing this dating game like you know sleeping around here and there sleeping around you know we know each other for two weeks. Oh, my dear, let's move in together. And then, yeah, just okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. So that is one thing you should, I, I think you don't have to come in and just come and meet it as a surprise like that. You need mm -hmm. to know how it is. So if possibly you have someone serious at home, please hold on to that. I know distant relationships are also difficult, but if that person is, you know, good <laughs> and you see the future with that person, please, don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but then most definitely you see it, it can happen anywhere we've not we don't know everyone you've not experienced everyone so definitely you there are people that are actually finding their spouses out here and all of that but then we should also know that a number of people are just in a trial and error and season so many sleeping around and all of that so if you're not comfortable with that then I feel like you should hold on to whoever you have. And then even if you don't have anyone, when you come out here, please still hold on to what you believe in. And definitely you're going to find someone that also believes in what you believe. But then don't settle. That is what I would like to say. Yeah, Do not settle. settle. Yeah. yeah. Don't <laughs> don't settle. Don't settle. And then um, don't settle for whatever reason. Just because you want to have someone, you want to overcome the loneliness or anything at all just do not settle and that is all yeah just keep an right. open mind as well <laughs> <laughs> so away from that let us talk about like average expenses we've spoken about mm. jobs and other stuff i want us to talk about average expenses in this country because yeah we really need to know how much like on a monthly basis we spend on transportation feeding rains and all of that this is actually very important information for people looking mm -hmm. to kind of like move out here yeah yeah true um i would say now um the the kind of expenses i'll be giving is for a student who is living alone mm. because definitely someone who is coming with a family will spend more than someone who is coming alone as a student yeah. so based on my own personal experience as a student who was living alone what I would say is that um, majority of what takes your money in a month is the rent. Now, over in here in the UK, um, if you're a student, you you either have the opportunity to live in a student's accommodation. They are called student halls, and there are lots of student accommodations. Actually, where I am sitting, I am there are lots of student accommodations. So once you get the student accommodation, usually the bills are included in the rent. So that means you don't have to pay extra for bills. But if you are living alone in a private accommodation, you have to pay for rent and pay for your bills. And your bills are, of course, calculated with how much you use light or water and all of that. So for a student living in a student accommodation, the average rent is about within £350 to like £500. And that's, of, of course, included, including your bills. Then when it comes to like transport and... um. I shared it in one of my videos as well. I I believe by the time you're watching this video, my other video, my Q and A video would have been, you know, uploaded as well. So I shared it in my Q and A video about life and study in the UK. That transport depends on you as a person. Like when I first came to the UK, I was flexing. I was using bus, using tram. <laughs> People 
were telling me that time when I go up for walk, walk. I said, no, I cannot walk. I wasn't working in Nigeria. Come on, I was driving in Nigeria. I cannot come and be what nobody taught me when I saw how much I was spending on transport. The transport for like trams here is like two pounds where I am. Um, and, and that's like two pounds for bus as well. So imagine you're going to school like let's say three times in a week and you're two pounds to and fro. And that minus Sundays, for example, if you have to go to church on Sundays or let's say you have a weekly church activity now, for example. Now I'm giving based on my own life and experience. So, so let's say in a week, I could be spending up to like 16, 17 pounds a week for transport. Now, if I, if I walk, I can save that money and I, that money can be put into other things. So what I would say is that, yeah, transport does take, you know, it accumulates and actually you could spend, you could be finding yourself spending up to like hundred pounds a month for transport. So if you're a student, I would just advise you to walk to school. If your accommodation is a walking distance to your school, definitely walk. Then on food, food does depends on people. Some people eat more than others. Some people, mm. they're fine with just Indomie and noodles every day. So they might not spend so much on food but i'll say on average you could spend close to 50 to 100 pounds on food per month and usually it's the nigerian or african foods that are more expensive you get compared to the usual foods that you just buy from a supermarket but food is not so expensive here in the uk except if you are buying nigerian or african foods and to be fair they are even those ones are not really so expensive but they are more expensive than the usual foods and then um what else again maybe like social life hanging out it all depends on you as well if you are a bougie person and you want to go to a five-star restaurant, of course, you will spend a lot of money. But if I just go into like a McDonald's or a KFC or like a casual restaurant, you might not spend more than like 50, 70 pounds a month on that kind of social life. So basically, those are kind of the things that you spend money on. But let's just say that on average, a student will spend between maybe 700 or 800 pounds per month and some people even spend like maybe like 500 pounds per month so it just depends on your lifestyle and it just depends on the individual but i would say that is the rent that takes the bulk of the money so yeah that's about expenses in the uk how's it like yeah. in italy well here it usually depends on the city you're coming to if you move into the bigger and larger cities like you know milano rome bologna <laughs> Be expecting to spend more yeah. you understand yeah but then at the end of the day if you move to smaller smaller um mm -hmm. cities then the especially on rent is going to be you know on the lesser side mm -hmm. so uh, i'm going to base all the expenses on these smaller cities yeah because even getting um, accommodation in these bigger cities is even difficult <laughs> It's difficult, yeah. yeah. So with this smaller cities, max you can spend up to like three hundred and fifty euros on rent, um, yeah. And then outside of that, feeding usually depends on you. And then most importantly, I think if you want to spend less on feeding, get like get accustomed early with the kind of like foods out here, mm -hmm. as compared to you wanting to still be eating our African food because that's what take majority of our money. So the moment you get so comfortable with eating the food out here, you're going to spend less. Then with transportation, just like you mentioned, like if you want to be taking tram, buses, and trains everywhere, you're going to spend more. Even though here, you can kind of like do a subscription, monthly subscription and all of that, which lessens the cost. But then one sure way for a lot of students um, is that of like investing in buying a bicycle. So you take it to and fro. So at the beginning, you can take buses and all of that. But then the moment you get to know the routes to your um, campus and all of from your apartment to your campus, just invest in buying a bicycle. Then you be using it to and fro. And then when you're done and you want to move elsewhere, you just sell the bicycle like that. And at least you get some returns on that, um, like whatever the amount you've invested um, in buying the bicycle, yes. So with that, that is what I think. Then about nightlife and all of that, hmm, like you really have to be very strategic. If you want to be spending every time on pizzas and all of, you're like, ah, I've come to Italy. I've been hearing about these pizzas. Let me just try it out. <laughs> You'll just be wasting your money. <laughs> you will just spend all your money. So it's it's good for you to very to strategize like how to spend your money on outings mm. and all of that. And please watch out. Here is different from maybe Nigeria, Ghana, 
or wherever we are coming from. Yeah, when someone invites you to a program, best believe you're going to pay you're for your pay. portion. You're going to yeah. pay for your portion. So don't yeah. think, ah, my friend invited me. It's my friend that is going to take, he's going to bear the cost. So you carry your purse and everything. You are ready to eat. You won't take anything with you. You will embarrass yourself. If mm-hmm. you're going for an event and you don't have money, please just ensure, find out from the person whether you'll be paying. If you'll mm-hmm. be paying, then you know. If you can, if you cannot get the money, you stay in your house. Mm-hmm. If you, you can get the money, then you go. I believe that's one thing that's going to help yeah. you a lot. If you keep saying yes to outings, you get there and then you have to pay for each and every of <laughs> these outings. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you might spend more. So that is one thing yeah. you should also look out um, for. So that is it. We have like full videos on our channels about expenses in, in Italy yeah. and in, in the UK. So please do um, check them out. I'll, I'll try as much as possible to be leaving the links to this video so that you don't find it difficult going yeah. to search on the channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave the links in the yeah. description so that it kind of like helps yeah. you to navigate um, them. Then yeah. I want us to quickly touch on like, you know, you're getting to the end of the conversation. And then guys, if this video has been helping you so far, please leave a comment, you know, and leave a comment. And subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe <laughs> subscribe this is to help you make a well-informed japan decision you understand so, yes yep. yeah <laughs> yeah so i want us to quickly touch on how easy it is getting a student job like after graduation and also particularly how easy it is remaining in this country because most people are coming out here they don't have plan of going back yeah they want to come here finish studying get a job and remain so how easy it is because i believe this is a very very important um topic to talk about yeah definitely um well what i would say is that from my own experience and what i've seen is that before definitely have a plan before you come some people just unfortunately come carry their families as well with no plan and i'm like come on like you need to have a plan and when i mean have a plan i don't mean like okay you're just japan for japan's sake like i feel like people are just trying to like travel just for the sake of traveling and yeah. then they now come and realize that it wasn't what they thought and then they struggle and then sometimes some people even still go back because they realize that they were even doing better back home yeah. than mm-hmm. when than when they traveled so that's why i said it also involves having a plan in the term, if you're covered, you could spend close to 50 to 100 pounds on food per month. And usually it's the Nigerian or African foods that are more expensive you get compared to the usual foods that you just buy from a supermarket. But food is not so expensive here in the UK, except if you are buying Nigerian or African foods. And to be fair, they are, even those ones are not really so expensive, but they are more expensive than the usual foods. And then um, what else again? Maybe like social life, hanging out. It all depends on you as well. If you are a bougie person, and you want to go to a five-star restaurant of course you will spend a lot of money but if i just go into like a mcdonald's or a kfc or like a casual restaurant you might not spend more than like 50 70 pounds a month on that kind of social life so basically those are kind of the things that you spend money on but let's just say that on average a student will spend between maybe 700 or 800 pounds per month and some people even spend like maybe like 500 pounds per month so it just depends on your lifestyle and it just depends on the individual but i would say that is the rent that takes the bulk of the money so yeah that's about expenses in the uk has like yeah. immediately well here it usually depends on the city you're coming to if you move into the bigger and larger cities like you know milan or rome bologna <laughs> be expecting to spend more yeah. you understand yeah but then at the end of the day if you move to smaller smaller um mm-hmm. cities then the especially on rent is going to be you know on the lesser side mm-hmm. so uh, i'm going to base off the expenses on these smaller cities yeah because even getting um, accommodation in these bigger cities is even difficult <laughs> It's difficult, yeah. yeah. So with this smaller cities, max you can spend up to like three hundred and fifty euros on rent, um, yeah. And then outside of that, feeding usually depends on you. And then most importantly, I think if you want to spend less on feeding, get like get accustomed early with the kind of like foods out here, mm-hmm. as compared to you wanting to still be eating African food. 
because that's what takes majority of our money. So the moment you get so comfortable with eating the foods out here, you're going to spend less. Then weight transportation, just like you mentioned, like if you want to be taking tram, buses, and trains everywhere, you're going to spend more, even though here you can kind of like do a subscription, monthly subscription and all of that, which lessens the cost. But then one sure way for a lot of students um, is that of like investing in buying a bicycle. So mm. you take it to and fro. So at the beginning, you can take buses and all of that. But then the moment you get to know the route to your um, campus and all of from your apartment mm. to your campus, just invest in buying a bicycle. Then you're using it to and fro. And then when you're done and you want to move elsewhere, you just sell the bicycle like that. And at least you get some returns on that, um, like whatever the amount you've invested um, in buying the bicycle, yes. So with that, that is what I think. Then about nightlife and all of that, hmm, like you really have to be very strategic. If you want to be spending every time on pizzas and all of, you're like, ah, I've come to Italy. I've been hearing about this pizzas. Let me just try it out. <laughs> you will just be wasting your money. <laughs> <laughs> you will just spend all your money. So it's it's nice. good for you to very to strategize like how to spend your money on mm -hmm. outings and all of that. And please watch out. Here is different from maybe Nigeria, Ghana, or wherever we are coming from. Here, when someone invites you to a program, best believe you're going to pay you're for your pay. portion. You're going to yeah. pay for your portion. So don't yeah. think, ah, my friend invited me. It's my friend that is going to take, is going to bear the cost. So you carry your purse and everything. You are ready to eat. You won't take anything with you. You will embarrass yourself. If mm -hmm. you're going for an event and you don't have money, please just ensure, find out from the person whether you'll be paying. If you be mm -hmm. paying, then you know. If you can, if you cannot get the money, you stay in your house. Mm -hmm. If you, you can get the money, then you go. I believe that's one thing that's going to help yeah. you a lot. If you keep saying yes to outings, you get there, and then you have to pay for each and every of <laughs> these outings. Uh, and then necessarily at the end of the day, you might spend more. So that is one thing yeah. to also look out um, for. So that is it. We have like full videos on our channels about expenses and in Italy yeah. and in, in the UK. So please do. Um, check them out. I'll I'll try as much as possible to be leaving the links to this video so that you don't find it difficult going yeah. to search on the channel. Good, <laughs> yeah, true. we'll leave the links in the yes. description so that it kind of like helps yeah. you to navigate um them. Then yeah. I want us to quickly touch on like you know we're getting to the end of the conversation and then guys if this video has been helping you so far please leave a comment you know and subscribe. leave a comment and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe <laughs> subscribe this is to help you make a well-informed japan decision you understand yes yeah yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah so i want us to quickly touch on how easy it is getting a student job like after graduation and also particularly how easy it is remaining in this country because most people are coming out here they don't have plan of going back yeah they want to come here finish studying get a job and remain so how easy it is, because I believe this is a very, very important um, topic to talk about. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, what I would say is that from my own experience and what I've seen is that before definitely have a plan, before you come. Some people just unfortunately come, carry their families at well with no plan. And I'm like come on like you need to have a plan and when i mean have a plan i don't mean like okay you're just japan for japan's sake like i feel like people are just trying to like travel just for the sake of traveling and yeah. then they now come and realize that it wasn't what they thought and then they struggle and then sometimes some people even still go back because they realize that they were even doing better back home yeah. than mm -hmm. when than when they traveled so that's why i said it also involves having a plan in the time if you're coming as a student now for my own student experience um i would say that your let's say you're coming for a master's degree right so whatever you have done in your undergraduate degree but i would say that that comes to good use as well like just because you studied a different course entirely in your master's that doesn't relate to your undergraduate doesn't mean that the experience you have or that degree you have wouldn't come to good use because when, you, when, you, when it comes to um, 
working after you're studying in the UK, you have different plans. You have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D plan. You have so many backup plans because you don't want to focus just on one. Like I've seen people who have a medical background and they are working as data analysts. They are working mm -hmm. as, you know, software developers. They are working as graphic designers in the UK. That's because of, you know, having, like you said earlier, like gaining those kind of skills as well. So what I would say is that as much as possible, like aside from even using your undergraduate degree, also have some skills as well that you know that, okay, if at any point, maybe a job is not forthcoming, for this degree, I can always still apply or have experience and skills to apply for another job. And I feel like that is very, very, very important for people that are probably medical doctors. Um, of course, the healthcare sector here is quite like open. So more people that are into like healthcare, doctors, nurses, you know, care workers, it might be easy for them to get a job compared to like other fields and all of that. Yeah. But at the same time, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse or whatever, I would say while you're doing your master's, gain other skills for example volunteer like when i was doing my masters i was volunteering a lot i volunteered in like about three or four like international charities and why did i do that so that i can have options so even if i don't like i don't use my undergraduate degree or my master's degree i can always use the experience i have from volunteering as well to apply for jobs that are related or in that sector as well so that's what i would say also try and volunteer as well volunteering gives you skills volunteering gives you experiences i want to about applying for jobs in the uk is that they do count your volunteering experience as also a good experience as well so even if you don't have a work experience where you're getting paid if you have a volunteer experience they actually do count that as well because they believe that you have gained the necessary skills even while volunteering and you have gained the necessary experience so don't just come and study and you're just studying you're not volunteering you're not working a you know a part-time job that is probably similar to what you would want to okay. do afterwards so i would say that that's very important as well because like like you said the the job market is very competitive so it's how can you stand out amongst every other person and in most times it's your skills and your experience that makes yeah. you to stand out so that's what i would say it's not it's not entirely so difficult to get a mm -hmm. job after it may take a while it may take maybe few rejections or a lot of rejections actually but eventually you will get something if you just keep revising your cv revising your cover letter check maybe there's something wrong send it to people that will proofread it for you let the let, let the second eye basically see your cv and your cover letter so that you can be able to know okay am i applying for this job the right way because most time people don't get the job because their cv does not really sell them or their experience their cv may not even relate to the job they're applying for people just mm -hmm. do much they will use the same cv for thousands of applications that cannot work your, your cv has to be specific to your application although i don't want to start talking about cv and all of that now but yeah there are factors you know that come into play when it comes to getting a job after some people find it easy and even before they graduate even before their course ends they do get a job some people have to wait like a year two years before they get a job so it's really varies and mm -hmm. these are just helpful tips basically to help you yeah, yeah. okay 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 yeah, in Italy, like I would say, like it, it just depends. If you want to remain here, it's easy. Like after uni, obviously you have you're going to get you have one year to kind of like get a job. Okay, so mm -hmm. within that year, one thing I love about it is the fact that within that one year, any kind of like full time job at all that you get, mm -hmm. it, as long as you get that job, it can help you convert, like you know, from mm -hmm. a student to a work permit. And then just um, remain here. Yes. Yeah. So even if at the end of the day you do not get a job related to the field you graduated, um, mm -hmm. like in, that's okay. Like okay. it's okay. Any other job can help you convert. But then while you're trying to manage it, try and also be looking for um, jobs in your field. So at least you utilize yeah. your your certificate and all of that. But then yeah. there are several options. Like during uni, before you graduate, usually. The universities, you, you, there are opportunities for um, like companies and students to kind of like, you know, interact and all of that. So take advantage of those opportunities, mm -hmm. sell yourself, and I'm sure you get um, 
opportunity from there. And during yeah. your studies as well, try and do volunteer volunteer internships and all of that. Mm-hmm. After that, you, there there's a high possibility for you to get retained or when you need a job, mm-hmm. you can based on network, you can go back mm-hmm. and kind of like apply and see. Then ensure that you work on your LinkedIn because now, like mm-hmm. man, it's a whole thing. Yeah, work on your LinkedIn profile. Just be posting things that kind of like make sense. Yeah. And then I'm sure you can connect with the number of people that can recommend you for mm-hmm. jobs as well. So yes, it's yeah. easy for you to convert and then remain in the the country. I know like a student that was able to come in and right now she's like on a path to becoming a citizen. She became, she changed, was able to convert. Um, she she got a um, like from student, she was able to convert from student to a work permit. Um, from there, she was able to convert to a permanent citizen, um, a resident. And then currently, she's on her way to becoming a citizen. Like this November, she can apply. Yeah. So it's yeah. just a straightforward um, you know, route. As long yeah. as you get a job, you can remain. And yeah, yeah so that's one thing you should basically. Um, no, as well. I just I just want to add something to that. So, um, in the UK as well, one another tip I'll give is that uh, most times your university, if you are studying, they usually have like career fairs. So basically, mm-hmm. that's when they invite different organizations to okay. come and talk to students about their company or their organization and what jobs that they offer. So I would advise that you go for those. Like for example, I went for all the career, not all the career fairs, but like when I first came, like every career fair I saw that was happening in my school i was going for it because i wanted to know what options i would have and it was even through the career fairs i found organizations to volunteer with that was where i found organizations to volunteer it and i was even bold enough we had like a guest lecturer that came as well who had like an ngo and i went up to her and i told her oh can i volunteer in your ngo and she was like yeah sure so I'll co- grab those opportunities as well like be 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 confident and be bold enough to you know if you find an opportunity take that opportunity opportunity as well don't be scared don't feel like you know you're not good enough or don't be less confident about yourself (laughs) also another thing about jobs after most students that do get jobs after they do get like graduate jobs so graduate jobs are like jobs that are for students who have just recently graduated maybe within one year or two years just depends on your organization so if you're a student as well maybe currently and you're looking forward to getting a job after your master's start looking out for graduate jobs graduate jobs are like entry-level jobs so that those ones are not really looking for you to have five years experience or three years experience they believe that you are just graduating so they expect that okay you don't have that much experience so when you have a graduate job that graduate job then gives you experience so that if you now decide to you know go for a higher job later you have experience in the uk and some of these graduate jobs they still retain people so even after your graduate you know job employment or contract is over they might decide to still retain you for another mm-hmm. position in that company so definitely look out for like graduate jobs or intensive jobs as well after wow. studies. okay yeah. okay thank you so much for for sharing that so like anyone that is like i've been listening to this point like you want to say thank you thank you for staying through like yeah. we're about to wrap up and i believe like anyone that wants to japa and move anywhere will be asking this very question like do you think the uk is a place for study and work hmm. from my own personal experience i would say yes why because um going through school and university here in the uk i would say that the educational system is quite good um you do get a lot of support as a student for example um if you're a disabled student you get disabled or disability support you get academic support you get financial support as well so i would say that yes because in the sense of support because as a student you do need support during your studies and i feel like I can't speak for all universities, but the University of Sheffield, where I studied, and, and I'm not trying to like advertise my university, <laughs> but I'm just giving my own experience basically studying there. I did get support, basically, like academic support. I had a personal tutor, 
that was always willing to like help me. I could always reach out to her if I had any difficulties because the system was different for me. So when you first come to the UK as a student, you'll be confused like because things are different. The system is different from back home. So I feel like having that support is very essential. The amenities as well that were available in my in my university at time as well made it easier to study. There were libraries open 24-7, 365 days a, a year. So that was easy. Like you had libraries around to help you facilitate your study the libraries had like computer systems as well so even if you didn't have a laptop you were good to go because although so there's sometimes that the libraries are filled up during like exam periods so that's when your laptop comes in handy but aside from that you have like system you can even borrow laptops as well if you don't have a laptop so i feel like these things are things that help in your study so that's on the study aspects on the life aspect like i said earlier the basic amenities are here for you to kind of have a comfortable life. And if you're someone that is contented with what you have, you basically live a comfortable life here. Um, you don't have to have millions of, you know, of pounds in your account to be able to live a comfortable life here. So that's what I would say. Safety wise as well, I would say it's a bit safe as well. Um, people do walk around in the night, they walk around on the streets, um, and also depends on the area, to be honest. Some states, mm -hmm. most, some cities might not be safe. Of course, the busy, busy cities might not be safe to like walk out in the night or in the middle of the night. But those are the things I would just basically summarize about life and like study in the UK. I would mm -hmm. say, and I would, I would definitely recommend someone, um, if you are looking to study in the uk i would say yes it could it could be for you and i was like some people some, some people do come in and they find it difficult they struggle and they go back so it's still really individual but based on my personal experience i would definitely say yes yeah 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 thank you for sharing that um you know with italy if you are intending to move in i'll tell you like is the place for you um the education is quality you you have you best believe that you're really going to have a very good experience out here so be coming ready prepared to kind of like study and then it's safe out here it's really like really really safe out here so that is something that you if safety matters to you then you should know this is a safe um place regarding working as a student i have already spoken about that it can be pretty much challenging but then with scholarship opportunities and all of that that are available for students you can take advantage of that and kind of like use that to support yourself but then if you want to increase your chance like your chances of um, getting student jobs i highly recommend you pick up like tech skills just like i mentioned to be able to work with any company anywhere in the world so i highly i will recommend like it for anyone that is um, looking to come and study in a place where you don't have to pay like so much because here the education is affordable too mm -hmm. you understand so if you're on the low budget side um, consider it's me <laughs> if, if you don't have so much money to spend do you consider it's me yeah so that is basically all i was saying um we do have specific videos on our channels on this i highly recommend that you do check them out so finally what will be your last word to anyone wanting to move mm. out here like for studies moving for work what would you like to say to anyone coming in your final words well my final words would be that i don't think there is anywhere in the world that is 100 percent rosy every place has their ups and downs and i just think it's all about you um just having that mindset that you've come for a specific purpose and you follow that purpose if you've come to study just face your studies focus on your studies if you've come to work as well focus on your work um like i said also find a community loneliness is a real thing and it's not to scare you but it's just to tell you that it can really get lonely here if you're coming alone so be kind of mentally prepared for that as well and i would say that you know whatever experience you have is is how you make the most of it to be honest like you can come and have a fantastic experience basically if 
you make the most of it. Make the most of every opportunity that you have. Um, don't be scared to walk into rooms. And, you know, I mean, I believe as a Christian that, you know, God has also favored us as well. So whenever I'm walking into a room, I know that I'm not walking alone. I know that God is solidly behind me. So I would say that my whole experience in the UK so far has just been good because of, you know, God has just been there with me. God has been guiding me and backing me up because you definitely cannot do life alone. God has connected me to the right people. And that was what, and those are the things I intentionally prayed for before moving to get connected to right friends and community, to get connected to the right church as well, and to also excel in my studies. So I feel like once you put in the work and you are focused and you are determined, you will definitely have, you know, it's these ups and downs, but eventually you'll be able to scale to. So make the most of the opportunity and the experience that you have and just have that mindset, that positive mindset that as you are coming, it's going to be easy and rosy for you. Don't come with a mindset that ah, I struggle, 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 struggle. No, if you come with that mindset, you will face struggles. Because whatever yeah. you put your mind to, that's what you eventually become and, you know, that kind of thing. So come with a positive mindset and just make the most of every opportunity that you have. Be good wherever you are. Like, you know, I always say that be a light because when you come, whatever you do can affect the next person that wants to come. So as much as possible, you want to give a good, you know, um, a good, um, how to say, a good picture of like I always say that you no know, as Nigerians as well or as Africans as well if you are coming don't come and then you know break the laws or do anything that will stop you know and prevent other people that want to come to probably you know um learn or study and all of that so as much as possible in any workplace you are in any school you are be the best version of yourself and show that yes we are good people we are people that you know we didn't come to just come and break laws but we came to just you know learn something mm -hmm. and eventually some people that want to go back to back home and you know Pour, pour that knowledge back into their country can have the opportunity to do so so exactly. don't don't close the door for others basically that is the summary of what i want to say but yeah that is my advice <laughs> oh thank you so much i mean that is that is so good thank you so much all i'll say to anyone you know who want to japa for studies or to kind of like move abroad and just for work um, the first thing I would like to say to anyone is like, don't let anyone guilt to you, like go trip you out of there. Like, hey, I feel like if you feel like it is something you want to do, the first thing you should look at is this really the thing for me and check the motives why you want to move. Not because everyone is moving, you want to move. So just like, um, just like Ruth mentioned, like, pray about it if that is the move for you the lord is going to guide you and then wherever you move like you're going to be fruitful in the land as long as he's with you so yeah. as out of that try and come with a plan like the worst thing you can ever try you can ever do to yourself is to move to any country without a plan you get stranded and you find yourself doing things that you never like you never would have considered doing Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, come with a plan, um, take good decisions. When you come out here, op like open yourself up. If you have to do decent jobs to be able to kind of like survive, pick the opportunity and do it. In Nigeria, in Africa, anywhere in Africa, in Ghana, you think, oh, if it's a cleaning job that I have to do, people will look down on me. Here, yeah, whatever you do, people respect you for it. Okay, here yeah, people are more cultured in that way. They respect you for what you do. So don't feel like, yeah, I cannot do this job. Ah, in Nigeria, I cannot, you're not, you're no longer in Nigeria, you're no longer in Ghana, you're abroad. Yes, so open yourself up. Labor. Yes, there's dignity in labor. As long as you are not selling yourself out and then you are doing, um, you know, a well-dignified job, don't let anyone kind of like um, guilt, guilt you for that and don't feel bad about it. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is, like don't try and be doing more or showing off a life that you are not basically living because that is actually what is that is actually what is affecting so many people so many people want to move here because of the lives they are seeing of others out there because sometimes it's true that is your life but then don't 
try to put up something fake out on social media mm -hmm. that you are not in real life. Life here can be rosy, but then life here can also be a struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just ensure that you are your authentic self. Don't lie about because there are a number of people that have lied about the lives they're living here. And people you know came to meet them and they're like, okay, the life you're living is different from what you are showing us on social media. Mm -hmm. So either for school or either for work, just come out here, live your authentic life. And I'm sure if this is the place for you, it's going to work for you. If this is not the place for you and you're considering moving anywhere else, move. Like, please, it just depends. All of us in our spirit, some things work for us, some countries work for us, some doesn't. So if it doesn't work, move to the next place you think will work for you. So mm -hmm. that is all. Our, yeah, that is basically what I, I would like to share with you guys my little advice to anyone that wants to kind of like move out here so we are just finally we're just going to drop our handles so that you follow us on our, yeah. our various social media handles we would go first um okay so, that anyone so um you can find me on youtube my name on youtube or my channel the name is dolapo adu um you can find me on instagram as well at dolly Deeves. and um i'm not really active on twitter to be honest but more, <laughs> but majorly if you want to contact me you can contact me through email as well i'll drop the email in the description box as well but yeah that's it yeah okay for me on youtube i'm royal and and then obviously like on instagram you can find me on instagram as well you can only find me on instagram and on youtube so on youtube Royal Anne, and then on instagram i am it's just Anne. okay so i'm going to leave the details as well in the description so that you do check it out and then if you want to reach out to me regarding anything because i did mention at the beginning um, I do help students to kind of like move in for study and all of that. Yes, yeah, so you can send an email to me at info.royalan at gmail.com. And then that is it. So that is it for this session. Um, <laughs> this session of lenses. We are so excited. Like this was really, really good. We're able yeah. to share uh, like fantastic stuff with you guys. So you can mm -hmm. always reach out to us and ask more information about yeah. wherever you're trying to move to. So that would be eat for this session we'll yeah. see you if you in... actually made it to this point thank you yeah. we know that it's long but thank you thank for you. getting us sticking with us till this thank very you. moment and yeah don't forget to like share share this video to someone trust me there's probably someone that's probably thinking of do i want to study in the uk or do i want to study in italy this video will be helpful to them do share this video like and please leave in your comments as well we want to see your comments and of course subscribe subscribe to subscribe. my channel subscribe to Anne's channel as well would be really <laughs> grateful and hopefully yeah i and Anne bring more collab videos for you all <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. thank you guys until the next time bye ciao bye. Ciao. Bye.